hi, this is just a fun activity that you can do with children as a family or as one adult with a group of children. Um, it's a statistics activity and all you need for it is um, a small bag or a large handful of M&Ms or Reese's Pieces or Skittles. Um, I'm going to do my demonstration with uh, M&Ms. Um, in addition to that, you need a paper and a pen or a pencil. Um, if you have crayons or markers or colored pencils, you could use those, but you don't need them to do the activity. So the first thing that you need to do is just open up uh, your fun bag of M&Ms. And each, you can use one bag of M&M for the whole group, or if you have enough, you could um, let each child have their own bag of M&Ms and do their own paper and work, or you could combine everybody's together. Um, again, I'm going to do it with one bag um, for my demonstrations. So say this is your fun size bag of M&Ms, and you've opened it and you've dumped it out on the table. And um, these are the, the M&Ms that you got. So you can see there's 21 M&Ms, and we're going to do uh, two main activities with the M&Ms. We're going to make a circle graph, and we're going to make a bar graph. So the first thing that you need to do is um, take your M&Ms or Skittles or Reese's Pieces and put them in a circle. And when you arrange your circle, it might take a little bit of um, work because you might you know, start with the circle a little big or a little small, but what you'd like to have is something that's fairly circular. You can see mine's not perfect, but, um, you know, fairly circular, and you want to put the colors together. So, you know, have all the browns together, all the yellows together, then the reds and the oranges and the blues and the greens. The order doesn't matter as long as you have them grouped by color. So the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to draw a circle inside of the M&M's. You want to eat these afterwards. You'll want to be careful to not draw on the M&Ms. But you'll want to draw a circle on the inside of the M&Ms. Just do as best you can to stay about the same distance away and make it go around. Once you've done that, um, you can put um, a dot um, approximately where it looks like the center of the circle is at. And then in order to make the line graph, or I'm sorry, the, uh, the circle graph, we're going to start at the edge of one of the colors and go to the center. So you notice here I'm right at the edge between the brown and the yellow. Then I'm going to go up here to the edge between the green and the brown. Bring that in. And then I'm going to do the same for the other colors. So the green looks like it's about here, the blue looks like it's about here, the yellow looks like it's about here, sorry that's orange, and then the red and yellow looks like it's about here. And then we can go, we can mark the pieces of our pie graph. We've now made a pie graph or a circle graph, and um, I'm going to put the colors in first so that we have that after we remove the M&Ms, we want to know which section was which color. So I'm going to write brown here. You want to leave a little space because we're going to put some numbers here. Then we're going to do green, and then we're going to do blue, orange, red, and yellow. So we've got the colors in there, and now we know that the total was 21. If you count them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 M&Ms. And you, could ha you might have more than that. You might have less than that. Um, the bags aren't, don't have all the same number in them, but it's around usually 20 to 23. So um, if you want to start with the brown in this case, we see that we have 6 out of the 21 M&Ms were brown. Now you could leave it, depending on the age of the kids and what they understand, you could leave six out of 21. If they're a little older or you wanna introduce some new concepts, you could um, reduce that fraction and say, 
Okay, well, 3 goes into 6 twice, and 3 goes into 21 7 times, so I could also call 6 out of 21 2 sevenths. And then if you have a calculator or you want to work with the kids on, um, on division by hand, you could divide this 2 divided by 7, or you could divide 6 divided by 21, you'd get the same thing. And that comes out to be about 0.2857. So we'll say that's about 0.29 or 29%. And again, you can do whatever part of this works for the kids that, you know, the age group that you're working with. You can do all of it. If uh, the children you've worked with have uh, worked with decimals and percentages and fractions, um, or you could stop with 6 over 21. Um, you could have them calculate it. You could have, you could help them calculate it. Um, whatever you think is best for the group that you're working with. And then for the green, we have 2 out of 21. That doesn't reduce because 2 and 21 don't have any common factors. Um, and then when you do 2 divided by 21, that comes out to be about point zero point zero. 9.5, so I'm going to round that to 0 0.10, 10, uh, it's closest to 0 0.10 or 10%. And then the blue, we have 4 out of 21, which also doesn't reduce because 4 and 21 don't have any common factors. That, when you divide, comes out to be about... 0.19 or 19 percent and you'll notice that even though this was double the amount of M&Ms um, because we rounded the 0.095 up to 10 percent that 4 out of 21 isn't exactly double of 10 percent we get 19 percent when we round that so you might discuss, again, if they're a little bit older children, you might talk about uh, rounding and the effect that rounding has. Um, the next one, we have 3 out of 21, which does reduce to 1 out of 7. And as a decimal, that's about 0.14. Two eight, so we'll say about 0.14 or 14%. Um, for the yellow, I'm just going to go off of what I had for the blue. So this is 4 out of 21, um, which is about 0.19, which is about, or which is 19%. And then the red, I'm going to just go off of the green. So that's 2 out of 21, which is about 0 0.10, which is 10%. Now, um, if you have some markers or some crayons, um, if you have markers, you probably would have wanted to do this before you wrote inside. Um, but you might want to color the, uh, the shapes of your pie graph. You, could uh, color this piece of the pie brown and green and blue and orange and red and yellow um, or colored pencils or crayons um, and that way you can see it visually with the colors but now you can discuss with the kids about how well this is 29 percent you notice that's a bigger piece of the pie than what 10 percent was uh, you could bring up some things like, oh gosh, it looks like maybe this is uh, a piece that's almost three times as big as this piece because 29% is close to 30%. So you could talk about some different things with the kids depending on what uh, you think of or what uh, you think that they would understand. But you you can see or you can talk with them about how the, the pieces that had the fewest colors end up with the smaller pieces of pie and then the pieces that had more colors end up with larger pieces of pie. And that's how we make that circle graph. So it's a nice visualization for how um, the amount uh, correlates to the 
size of the pieces of the pie. Another thing you can do before we go on to the next part of the activity, and this is again all based on uh, the age of the kids and what you want to do. So you could then talk about um, the expected value. So I happen to look up, and you know you can Google uh, more information if you want to, but I Googled and found that M&Ms are expected to have about 14% yellow in the mix. So we could talk about, is this bag of M&Ms um, higher or lower than the expected value for the yellow M&Ms? And you could look up all the different colors, um, or you could just stick with one color. Um, but the 14% yellow is what's advertised or posted as being the amount of yellows. And so for this case, this bag had more yellow M&Ms than what you would expect. And you could talk about things like, would it be common or uncommon to have five yellows or 10 yellows in our bag? Um, what do you think would be the most uncommon? And of course, the, the, most, the further you get away from 14%, which in this case, 14% of 21 would be um, about three. So if you have a calculator, 0.14 times 21, or you want to calculate by hand, comes out to be about three pieces. And so you could say, well, what if we, would it be common or uncommon to have two pieces or one piece? What would be the most uncommon? And of course, the most uncommon would be if you had 21 yellows. That would be very, very unusual and very, very unexpected. It would not be the expected value of yellows that you would um, anticipate to, to dump out of your bag at all. So uh, those are some other things you could talk about with the, with the probability or statistics. And just for your information, um, I did look up really quick um, the expected values for um, Skittles. And for Skittles, the expected value of yellows is about 21%. And the expected value of yellows for Reese's Pieces is about 25%. So next, we're going to take our pieces and we're going to rearrange them. And now we're going to make a bar graph out of our pieces. So we have our same 21 pieces out of our bag, if you've been able to keep the children from eating them all. And we are going to um, arrange the colors of the M&Ms in a line for each of the colors. And you can see that when you arrange them in this way, it makes either you could consider this a dot plot or you could consider it a bar graph. So if you want to keep things really simple, you could just draw the number of M&Ms at the top. So you could write, say, six here, four here, two here, four here, two here, and three. Or if you wanted to, you could make a scale on the side and like a y-axis, and you could put The numbers over on the side. So you make a mark about where the top of the first M&Ms are and the second and the third and the fourth and the fifth and the sixth and that would be six M&Ms and five M&Ms and four and three and two and one. And then if you want to um, still have the bar graph have all the information on it after you remove the, the M&Ms you can write the colors underneath, so brown and yellow and green and blue, and red and orange. And then you could either put a dot at the very top and make a line graph, um, or you could make a bar graph.
So as you can see, I've put the bars around the M&Ms and that leaves me with um, a bar graph. And we can remove the M&Ms now and it still has the information because we still have the colors down here. And we still have, we have the numbers on the side for how high the bars are. Um, and you can remove the M&Ms. And then you can ask the kids questions like, um, which of the colors had the most? Uh, which of the colors had the least? Were there any colors that had the same amounts, like the green and the red were the same, or the yellow and the blue were the same? Um, and they should and try to do that after you've removed the colors. And um, you could either uh, remove the M&Ms, or you could, uh, and leave it like that, you could color them in. Um, and, but then you can ask the kids questions about, you know, reading the graph um, without the M&Ms on there to see if they are understanding what the bars represent. So here's what the bar graph would look like with the M&Ms removed. And now if you ask the children the questions with the M&Ms removed, they're not just counting the M&Ms. They're actually uh, hopefully looking at the height of the bar and able to go over to the left and see what that means um, for a number on the side. It helps them learn to understand why, you know, what does a four mean? Well, it means there were four M&Ms that made that bar. Four items um, caused that bar to be that height. Um, the other thing that you can do is, as I said, you could make it as a line graph. So now we're back to where we have uh, the M&Ms, and we could put a dot at the top of each of the rows of M&Ms. And then we could remove the M&Ms and connect the dots. So now again, once the M&Ms are removed, you could ask the kids, well, what does this dot mean? And they could hopefully tell you that, well, that means that the brown, there were six, and the yellow, there were four, and the red, there were two. And again, you're getting them to read down here on the bottom and then up and over. And you can help them with doing something like maybe just do a dotted line. Say, well, we came up from the red, and then when we come over, how high are we? And it will help them understand what the line graph means. I hope you have had fun with this activity with the kids that you're working with, and thanks for stopping by.